let's look today. We have a plastic orange juice container over here. This is a yogurt container. Uh, this was something that we had in a bathroom that held a, a cotton balls or Q-tips or something. Here's a Pepto-Bismol bottle, a what's this, olive oil bottle, and a small can. Uh, I'm going to change all of these into apothecarian jars. Our first one we're going to work on today is this little can and we're going to turn this into a container of mummy dust. Now if you've studied Egyptology you will know that the uh, people had sought after mummy dust or mummy ashes or the remains of mummies as a cure. So let's start by painting this can black. The first part of my tutorial is I'm using an alpha acrylic, what number is this? 999 black. We've got beautiful sunlight streaming through the streaming through the window here. That's gonna add a nice touch to my my video. And with this really heavy black. Oh, we might want to take off the little uh, doohickey here. We'll do that later. Anyways, we'll take that off. But we want to completely black out the whole entire can. I'm going to do this and let you see what it looks like when it's finished. Hey, okay, once you get your can nice and dry, I just put mine under a hair dryer. I'm going to use a bit of styrofoam and I'm going to make an imprint like this. Now, oh, get a little bit of water there. Now, once we get the circle on there, we're going to cut that out and fill that top in. And once you get your circle cut out, trim it down a little bit so it fits in there very nicely. You can use some white glue or you can use some hot glue and you're going to hot glue that piece right into there. Now, once you got that hot glue down, which only took me about a second to do, uh, but now we're going to start building up a round layer using some air dry clay. Also known as feel the clay, and we're going to start creating a top. I have two bits of clay out here. The first piece I'm going to apply as a cap over and around. the top here okay and I'm going to build this up until it looks like an oversized cap so let me finish that and then show you what it looks like there once you get the, the top you can see I can just put a piece around there like that and it looks like a lid next part you're going to roll secondary piece of air clay and then create a tear shaped top very carefully place it on there in the center now we want this to dry our next bottle up for bids today here is a little orange juice bottle I'm going to take off here and take off the label and expose what we got hey that's a nice bottle look at that that up nice. We're going to take this off too here, but we want to get rid of the cap and get rid of the label. <laughs> and we're going to start building up a lip over here. Next step we want to do is we want to start hot gluing a rim around here to create a lip. And we're going to be using the clear glue gun sticks because we want it to be clear as the plastic that we're using. Okay, once you get the first lip on there, you, if you like that, just keep it like that. But I'm going to do an, uh, when it's a little bit larger than that, I'm going to do a double ring. But you have to let the hot glue cure first, and then you can do another one. And today, our lip is nice and solid on there. We've got a nice old-fashioned style 
flip that we made and we're using today a white glue and two food colorants. We're going to put in a drop of red and a drop of green and what this is going to make is a brown and you can actually just mix this in with your soft brush and any desired shade that you'd like it to be. You can actually go darker than this if you'd like. But we want to mix up the glue with the food coloring. It's really good. Okay, it makes it really, really good. And I also have to tell you that this always dries a shade darker than what you see on here. So with your brush, just start painting the bottle with the mixture. And it's very important to know that since you are working with glue and not acrylic paints you need to wash these brushes out with hot water so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint this bottle completely and then show you what it looks like there once you get it completely coated making sure no part is left unfinished you need to let this dry for a full 24 hours our third bottle was more of a challenge, so today, using a mini hacksaw and a pair of these cutters, I took off the top over here. So let's build this up now with some hot glue and make a lip. Okay, so once you get your lip on your bottle the way you want it, there it is. I'm going to now paint with some glue. I'm going to do it again. Quite a big amount of glue out here and color choice. Gonna make sure you got enough of it out there because you're gonna be putting a much larger area of the bottle. I say we should do blue this time. Two drops should do it. And I'm using a nice big soft brush and we're gonna blend that in here. So what I'm gonna do is Mix this up. And then coat the bottle completely. And you can go really dark if you want to add a lot of blue food coloring to this and make it really dark. Uh, you can. But in this case, I'm just going to have a nice light blue coloring on here. Okay, I just took off a little piece of paper there. Okay, I'm going to coat this completely and I will show you what it's going to look like when it's done. Okay, once you got your bottle completely coated, let this sit for another 24 hours and see what it looks like. Our next bottle poses kind of a challenge because it has a kind of a rim here. Let's see what we have. Take off the cap. And the first thing we want to do is we want to take off this green band here. See if I can get in there. Something. Very easy. Pop right off. And take off this label Got a really interesting jar to work with today look at that okay our next choice deci decision is to I don't know take off this top let's let's uh Take that top off completely and uh, see what that looks like. Okay, so I just chewed that right off. 
with this little plastic chopper here. I've got a rough edge and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in with my hot glue gun and build up a lip. Voila, after I got the lip put on there, I added some extra lines with the glue gun to give our bottle a little bit of decoration here. And let's see what this is going to look like in the next stage. And once your container is dried, after 24 hours, you can do all kinds of crazy stuff with it. We want to have this down here, a matching band around the base. And we're going to put that on today and wait for another 24 hours for it to dry. So I'm going to demonstrate what I did was I covered the whole entire base with a piece of the air clay. And the reason is that if you just try to put a band around there, it'll pretty much fall off. So you want to have something that fuses to there. But that's going to look like a base of a ceramic container. So we're going to let this be like this, and we're going to let that dry. Okay, and today we have all of our hot glue has been dried. The lip is now dried. And today we're going to be mixing up a very special mixture of a acrylic black 999 and also a burnt umber 624 today, a very light coat. And we're going to be painting over this bottle to give it a very special. Currently I have about two parts brown umber and about one part black. I'm going to be using more of the brown umber today and mixing that in. And what we want to do is we want to coat this bottle. There, that's the color I'm looking for. We want to coat this bottle completely with this very mysterious color. And we may need to put on two layers, but it's going to give it a very mysterious look to it. So that's going to be a very important selling uh, selling issue for our, our bottle here. So let's apply this on and I'm going to completely cover this bottle. I'm going to show you. So once you got your bottle completely dried and you can now mix up a silver 995 Acrylic. Just build a bit about that. It's a little sound there for you. And I'm going to be putting in a very, very small dab of permanent yellow deep on here. Just a very tiny amount of that. That's a number four. And we're going to be mixing this up together to create. Now you could use a gold color, but um, I would highly recommend highlighting it with the silver and the yellow. I'm using a very, very, very soft brush on here. Very, very soft brush. And we are just going to lightly touch the surface of all the raised areas of the bottle. Don't worry about any type of uh, small errors and stuff. It only adds to the, the look of the bottle. Okay, I'm going to completely do this and show you what it looks like when it's finished. Okay, and once you've got the bottle completely dry, go in with this nice soft brush into a 999 black. And we're going to make a slurry and we're going to dull down all of gold paint that we made, kind of the mixture of silver and yellow. Number four, we're going to dull this down. This is going to add a very mysterious look to our bottle. Just let it drip and dull down the paint that you put on there. Once this is done, let this completely dry. Just layer it up. The final look of this bottle is very, very mysterious and creepy. And the green bottle today. I have my hot glue already warming up. And today I'm going to be adding a lip to the top of this. We want to cover over these modern day screw tops. 
So we want to do that, and we're going to mix up a very special green to with our food coloring and our glue, and we're going to make that disappear. So now, once you got your lip put on there from the hot glue, which completely covers the modern screw cap, we're going to mix up today a double drop of green food coloring and a half drop of blue. We're going to see how this color turns out if it is too light or not olive enough as in this case we're going to add a tiny tiny drop of red you can see this is a half you can carry half drops with this over here to make it more in the brown tones now at present it doesn't look like anything you would say oh that's the wrong color but when it dries it'll dry the color of the bottle and blend right in just make sure you mix it properly let's put this on okay, I'm going to finish this and show you what it looks like lip completely covered now make sure you wash your brush very thoroughly under hot water because this is a mixture of glue and food coloring and hot water will take it right out of the brush. Our video will show now how good the top piece came out. Now, look at that. We transformed a modern day screw cap into a more older looking bottle and of course we're going to put our cork in there later but that's really nice, huh? Our last of our bottles today we're going to be working on here is a modern one. And it comes with a cork already, but I don't like this cork. It just doesn't suit me at all. So we're going to coat this cork over with an air clay. And we're going to punch some holes in it. We're going to make it into... We're going to take a cork and we're going to make it into a cork. So let's see how that comes out. What we have here is some air clay and we are going to cover this cork with a very thin layer of our clay to transform it into another type of cork. Because this is just too modern looking. That's just, you know, 20th century modern. We don't want that. We want something that's much, much, much older looking. So you've got to make sure that this is really thin because it's got to have to fit in there. So let me cover this completely and I'll show you what it looks like. When what I did was I put it back into our bottle to make sure that it was the right size. Because this is going to shrink slightly, popping it out. Now, by taking our tool, we're going to punch holes in this. enough random holes to create the look of a cork. Then when it's finished, we're going to smooth this out and let it dry. I'm using three pins today to create a tripod so that the clay can dry on all sides. Okay, since this is all nice and dried and this is all nice and dried, today I'm going to go in here, I'm going to paint the lid now of our very special jar and we're going to create this one to have a nice look about it here. So look at that <laughs> handle. It does, it looks like a jar with a lid on it. Came out really nice. 
we finish this, we're going to do the base. And today we had printed out labels for our bottles. See, I'm just using a, a soft brush today and some water. And our old friend, burnt umber number 624, making up a, a slurry. And we're going to very, very easily stain these labels. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, some people use uh, tea bags to stain labels. And... Others would use coffee. I find that just using burnt umber is is really good. And that is just one style of staining. Let's do another one in a different color. So I'm bringing in some yellow ochre, number five over here. We're going to add a little bit of yellow ochre to our umber and create a different type of different type of staining here let's do this one in there okay and let's go back into the burnt umber again There's so many different ways to to stain your labels, but I, I believe that this is a very, very easy method, and using the burnt umber is very effective. Once you got your labels cut out, let them dry, and then we'll be able to place them on our bottles. Cork making for the bottles. How do you create the corks for the bottles? Well, we're using an air-dried clay today. I'm using a full clay, and you can take out some of the clay and you're going to roll it in a ball like this we're going to create a marshmallow shaped piece now you got to also measure the size of the bottle now I'm making one end down here much more smaller and the top so the bottom piece is going to be smaller the top piece is going to be larger this you can actually mold it with your fingers now here's an amazing thing uh, I did a photo shoot called the curiosity shop and I made over 300 of these corks for the bottles now what I'm doing is right after you get your cork shape made you're going to use some type of tool you know, I'm just using a, a mechanical pencil that doesn't have any lead in it and I'm going to be punching random holes all over our cork because as you know corks always have holes and little divots and stuff make sure they're everywhere I'm just making sure the top is larger the bottom is smaller and what I'll do is I'll draw that out to make sure everybody knows that's how the shape should be because when it fits into the bottle it's going to have to find a stopper now once you have the quirk make you're going to be putting it aside and letting it dry for at least a whole day now yesterday I had made two corks up you can see they're already solidified so we are going to paint these to make them look like genuine corks and we're going to put an aging on them to make them look old and mysterious for our bottles. Today's lineup of colors today I'm using a black 999, I'm using a white uh, 600 and a burnt umber 624 and as a tone to make it more beige we're going to be using a permanent yellow deep number four. Okay, with our colors in place, I'm going to start off using some white and some burnt umber and start mixing the tone a little bit of black to bring that more down deeper and a touch of yellow. Okay. And a little bit more 
burnt umber is great color in prop making. I just use it for everything. And there it is. There's our color for our cork. Once you have the cork, now apply the color. And I'm using a stenciling style, I'm actually driving the color into the little divots. Now what I'm going to do, I was saying, well, how are you going to paint all that? Well, I'm only going to paint half of this cork. And then I'm going to run this over under, I should say, under, no, over, under a hair dryer, blow dry it very quickly, and then turn over and do the other side. Now, it only took me about one minute to completely coat that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put three large pins in a cork to make it able to stand up. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a nice clean brush. We're going to be going into our black, making a slurry. And now we're going to be painting our cork. We're going to leave this on to dry. It ages this immediately. You can see what it does. It shows all the little divots. Um, in a photo shoot, this looks really good. Just layer it up. Let it uh, stain and let it do its job. Okay. And let that dry. Just show a close up so somebody can see what it looks like. That's part. Now that we have our, all of our bottles created and we have our corks made and our labels, let's assemble them. Our very special props today, I made up a name called Borgonet Root. We don't know what it is. And to put something in it that actually looks like dry root, I wanted to show you these two extra props that I had made. To the left, this is nothing more than dried potato peels. Or if you wanted something else a little, little bit more creepier, you can actually use dried banana peels, which turn black.